Okay, so um, welcome everybody. We're here with uh, Delta County School District Superintendent Karen Gibson and Delta County School District Assistant Superintendent Kirk Clay. And we're going to talk about a variety of issues, uh, but mainly the bond issue that's coming up in November. So why don't you give us a quick overview of what that looks like? Right, I'll start out and then we'll, we'll tag team. But um, way back in 2002, um, Delta County passed a bond for Delta County School District, and that was for the middle schools. Um, every community with Delta, Cedar Edge, Hotchkiss, and Paonia all either got a new middle school or they got an addition to a building for a middle school. Very grateful for that. And in 2023, um, that bond will be paid off. And I feel Delta County School District has been a very good steward of the funds and very happy to share that that bond will be paid off. What we are asking is to extend or continue um, with that mill levy or that tax rate for some projects that we're going to share. Um, so we are paying off the one bill or the bond. This is a new bond. So it is adding debt, um, but it's continuing the amount of the payment. And from doing the continuation, um, it'll be about $27.7 million that will come in and you know how cost of building is right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, it doesn't do a lot of projects, but it's a way to take um, our high schools that were built in 1981, the first graduating class in 1982, and um, update those facilities. And then hopefully they last the next 40 years. So I was the last graduating class, 1981. Oh, you were? In the old building. From, yeah. Yes, yep. yeah. So, okay. I was so jealous of that class of 82. Out of that new high school. Didn't get the new building. Yeah. 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 Um, so there's a repayment cost, um, but we feel that our needs are really there. Um, there's not been a lot of updates and renovations on those buildings. Um, so that's what we're looking at. And then I've asked Kurt to, to share what those projects are real quick. Sure, okay. Yeah, so our projects are um, really the secure entrances are a big piece. Um, in those buildings, many of you know, when you walk in there, somebody can go any direction without going to the office first. Um, and so one of the biggest needs that we have is those secure entrance. We would build those with our offices or people who are out there and greeting people, but also where we'd have a locked vestibule before we let them in. Uh, the general public or anybody into the building. So is that going to look a lot like Delta Middle School does now? Yeah, very similar to that setting where we have a vestibule where they there's a locked door but before they can get all the way into the building. Yeah, so that's that's the newest model that's yeah. out there. So it's really tough to get into Delta Middle School. Just a little antidote that <clears throat> we had a granddaughter going to Delta Middle School before yeah. the renovation yeah. and it was easy to bring her lunch. Right? Yeah. And then after the renovation, my wife's like, I'm not doing it anymore because it's too hard to get through. It takes too much time. So yeah. It is. And, it, and, you know, it does take time. But, but the safety insurances that we have for those students yeah. uh, far outweighs that time that we have to spend to do that. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's very important that we have that secure entrance. Um, so did, I'm sure this was been on the priority list for a long time. What did Uvalde do? the shooting in Uvalde do to, to get yeah. this priority going? You know, I think that obviously it just brings it on, it's fresh in everybody's mind again. I mean, I think you <clears> date <throat> clear back to, you know, when the Columbine happened and mm -hmm. we were all thinking about this. I remember Karen and I have been in this position, this is going on our 11th year, and I think um, we've had these conversations probably every year in the 11 years that we've had that is how do we make our high schools more secure do we bring those offices out so for the line of sight do we build new offices all of those conversations and the reality of it is um, when we're trying to educate kids it kind of just gets put down but right. these as these um, situations happen across the nation you know it, it's something we just have to address you know, the one thing that struck me about Uvalde is when you see the picture of the children and the two teachers, those kids, kids look like they could be here. Right? Yeah. They could live here. And so it really hits home. Um, 
it's a tragedy and it pulls at your heartstrings. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing with the bond, it can only be used for capital projects. We've heard people say, well, what about staff salaries? And that's something we're constantly looking and researching as well. But a bond can only go for the capital projects. Okay. And so that's why yeah. it's projects. Okay. Um, so the bond amount, so I was looking at the, uh, on the website, uh, deltaschools.com, right? Mm -hmm. Deltaschools.com and looked at your uh, um, PowerPoints and such on there. The, <clears throat> let's talk first about the three to two vote. Mm -hmm. So you have two yeah. uh, board members vote against. Can you talk about what the discussion was there and why for and why against? You bet. Um, they just feel there's a lot of stress out there right now with um, inflation going up, the cost of gas, all those things. Um, and that is true, but what I'd like to share is we're asking for the same mill levy as 2002. Everything else is increasing. We're asking for that mill levy just to stay the same and to continue. And then um, another discussion is wanting more details at the time, but we, you know, it's kind of building that airplane in the air um, until we know that we're going for it. Um, you know, we haven't yet dived into every little detail. So with inflation and where the economy is right now, and then just working through the projects, um, and that caused the three to two, but the three that voted for it were very positive. Um, students first, safety first. And so, um, but now all board members, the vote was made and we're moving forward. Good. Um, so is $27.4 million repayment is 52.4 million. Can you talk about that a little bit and educate us on? You bet. So it's just like taking a loan out from a bank. You you borrow X amount of dollars and then however many years that repayment and then the interest. And so um, with the bond at the 27.7 million, it does the repayment is up to that 52 million. Okay. And then how many years over the, is this going to be? This is a 20, five. 25, 25 year. year. So it's like getting a 25 year mortgage, right? It yeah. is. There's the it value is. of the house and then there's the interest that you have to pay. So the school district cannot take out a loan. Right. And in order to <clears throat> update facilities, build or do anything in a school district, it's a bond. And if you look at Mesa County School District or Montrose School District, they've had bonds all over. And this is the way that we're able to update um, or remodel our schools. And I really feel that schools can be an economic driver. Um, parents want the best for their kids and we want the best for our kids. And we feel that these updates can help us. So we talked about the safety on the, how many, how many schools in the district have that secure interest now? Four. Four, so let's Well, see. we're planning on doing four. It's the four original high schools, mm -hmm. but in Paonia it changed to Paonia K-8. Okay. So it'll be Paonia K-8, North Fork High, Cedar Edge High, and Delta High. So who has it currently? That's secure interest. Delta Middle School? So, oh, I see what you're saying. So all of our schools have somewhat of a secure entrance, a locked door. Um, all of our elementaries have a buzz-in system, but it's a little video, um, so we don't get a great um, picture of the demeanor of that person, and you don't get that one-on-one -on -one to say, okay, this person's really upset or they're bothered or, you know, it's, it's just a small video camera that's out there um, on the outside of the door, but all like, of our schools have that. And I would just like to add, so any of our, any of those schools, if you buzz in, yes, there's a, a camera there and the door is locked, but you can't tell the de demeanor of the person. Mm -hmm. You can't tell if they're hiding something. You can't tell if they've had a good day or a bad day, however that is. And then when that door is unlocked, they can either go down a hallway real quick or they're instantly in, um, some schools call it the commons area, other schools call it the cafetorium. Right. Like at Delta High, you could be with 300 students at one time. Right. And because the office area is a way off, and now's the time to make those yeah. updates. So you <clears throat> talk about Delta High School, so I, I was up there a couple of weeks ago delivering some print jobs. 
you can walk in, like you say, you're right in the common area, there's students, and then there's staff at the counter, which is a little ways from the door. And that hallway. And right the hallway. You go in. Yeah. And okay. So any changes inside the building that you'll, you see happening besides just the, the vestibule area? Yeah. So the main, in, the main school entrance and the secure entrance is our big one. But then the next big phase of that is the locker rooms. At all these high schools, you can imagine they're 40 year old locker rooms. Mm -hmm. um, and really there's just not adequate space. And um, those locker rooms were small to begin with. Right. Um, and to get to the standards today, it requires more space. So what we're looking at doing is taking the existing locker rooms, making that one locker room, and then we would take the existing wrestling room or weight room, depending on what that is in each school, and we would put the other locker room within that area, which then has you move that wrestling room to replace that on an exterior or a brand new building uh, that's attached to the, okay. to, attached to the school. Um, so we're looking at doing that at Sea Ridge High School, North Fork High School, and Delta High School. At Delta High School, we would we are also looking at the addition of an auxiliary gym. Uh, many people don't know, but um, that school is about you know 635 students currently, um, and we fluctuate from 620 all the way up to 700 in the last 10 years. Um, and um, we're one of the only schools that size in the state of Colorado that does not have an auxiliary gym on it. Um, it's just, just to add to that, so at Delta High during basketball season, you know, the morning practices start at 5.30 right. and the evening, and then you have PE classes and we have right at four PE teachers that share all that space. And then the last practice, they're at 8, 8.30. Right, yeah, so, yep, I've had kid play, kids yeah. play basketball yeah. in there. A really inconvenient for parents to get up there at 5 a.m. or 5 30 kids again. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Do you have the numbers on how much the school school district has grown since 1982 since we put those in? We have the numbers. I don't have them in front of me. I don't know what the actual ability they've actually grown since 19 grew since 1980 or not. You know, in the North Fork at right now did a consolidation because we're down on the North Fork right. overall. District-wide, um, about 10 years ago probably, um, since 10 years ago we're down about 400 students probably. Like since the that, mines that, that, that time happened. Yeah. Um, so, um, so it, you know, it ebbs mm -hmm. and flows, but I, I do believe that we're gonna start getting some of those students back. We're seeing that this year. Um, this year we think we're going to be up around 30 students as a district, awesome. which is a positive trend for so us. So the Delta County Independent tomorrow's oh, yeah. edition. Oh, okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's a positive trend and hopefully we'll continue that. Okay. So Yeah, it was 32 is what the number I saw. Right now. In, eight, you know, eight net with uh, the Academy. Right. Yeah. yeah. Official <clears throat> numbers will come out October 1, obviously, but, yeah. um, but we're, we're a few up. So earlier in the year I saw you had a... Uh, kind of a summit with the local law enforcement. Uh, what, what did you get out of that? It's a great question. We, we actually meet with our law, local law enforcement, all four agencies, um, Paonia, Sea Ridge, Hotchkiss, Delta, and then we also have a sheriff's office and our sheriff is always there in attendance as well. We meet with them quarterly. Okay. Um, one of the things that we really believe in is if something were to happen, tragic incident of any type, communication is the key and if we're not talking to one another we don't know what, what this group is doing or what that group is doing um, it makes that situation so much worse so we really are um, trying to make sure and, and have for the last uh, five or six years now where we have quarterly meetings we talk about school safety we talk about all the issues that we have currently and it could be as minor as uh, I say minor, but vapes in school and how we they can help us and we can help them to tragic or uh, a school shooting kind of situation. Yeah. So um, we train all of their officers on our ALICE training that all of our teachers are on. So they know exactly what our teachers are doing, what our students are doing, um, and we know exactly what they're doing. So um, it's super important for that communication to take place. Just to add um, Delta um, PD, that we have a school resource officer through them. And then the Cedar Edge, they have a designated person 
in our schools all the time when that phone call came in yesterday. Um, he was at the school. Um, we work well with our Hotchkiss and then Paonia quality relationship and then the Sheriff's Department as well. So yesterday after that incident, Luke Fedler came to this office and we sat down and debriefed and then we wrote a statement together and just cannot thank them enough. Um, so it's a quality working relationship and it's those good meetings that we have. Yeah, uh, Luke Fedler, uh, Delta Chief of Police. Um, so um, speaking of vaping, that's becoming <laughs> quite the issue. We've got a little story in that in DCI this week as well. And I saw Joyce Conger came before the board as well to talk about it, the bus yeah. stops, that sort of thing. Yeah. And it seems to be younger students, you know, middle school age, maybe yeah. even younger. We're seeing it in Montrose as well. So talk about that a little bit, if you don't mind. You know, vaping is a, uh, we see as a gateway to use of drugs or alcohol or tobacco and all of those things. And I think that we, we really, what, what we want is our parents to be aware of what their kids are doing. Um, vapes are advertised as being safe. Uh, we know that that's not the case. Um, if you look at the, you know, the real research behind that, we're really um, questioning whether they are safe for any person, let alone adolescent students. Um, and, and, you know, in the school, obviously, that causes a big issue. Um, we treat it very seriously, and we're trying to catch it as early as we can, as often as we can. Um, but it, you know, it, it's just one of those, it's just different than when you and I were in school, it was something else, and now it becomes vapes, is what we're dealing with today. Yeah, you know, when I was in school, we had a smoking area. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, <clears throat> whenever we got in trouble, we had to clean up the suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's just a different issue that we're dealing with today. Yeah, but in vapes, dap pens, that sort of thing, you can put other. Yeah, that's the substances. concern, obviously, is that they're putting other substances in there, and I know we're. You know the um, we're doing a lot of work right now with with that with the fentanyl and all of that that's mm -hmm. hitting um, the addictions that are going on with those kind of drugs. Um, we're doing a lot of work with our students and our staff around that right now. Um, Kurt and I both attended the town hall meeting um, with the fentanyl awareness, right. and from that. Um, we are working with Lyndall Young and we're going to do a staff training and optional, it'll be part of our um, professional development day where staff can select that option to go to. And then I do a district-wide student advisory council and um, we're planning on the students leading some uh, awareness weeks, drug awareness, it might be during Red Ribbon Week, we, we don't have that planned and let the students lead that, have the ownership and really bringing awareness because um, it is scary out there. Not, it's coming into this area, but on a national level as well. Right, and we're, we're seeing, I think parent awareness is so key with that as well. I think even if your child doesn't have a vape mm -hmm. pen or, or dab pen or whatever, all it takes is somebody to put fentanyl in a pen, take a hit in the, yeah restroom and then we've got big trouble. Yeah, yeah, it can be very scary. So back to Uvalde for a second. I know it's a sad subject, but one of the things, reading everything about it, there's a couple issues. One is they had a secure front door and somebody propped open the side door. Last day of school, you know, relax the rules a little bit. Do, have you, um, I'm not familiar with the Alice train, but do you have meetings with your teachers and talk about security and how important it is not to relax those kind of things? You know, we do. And Kurt does a very good job of, of leading and, um, you know, we walk around our schools as well. And to remind teachers, let's leave the door shut. I think it's an ongoing thing. We can never relax on that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an ongoing process. Well, I think safety measures are only as good as our humans that, that do them, right? right. Like, so we just received a huge grant over the last two years to update all of our locking system, which has made our schools so much more secure. Um, because again, we know who has access to that door, who has access to, to all of our um, hallways, and so on and so forth. Um, but if we leave that door propped, that key system doesn't work effectively. Right. and so. Um, human error comes into play and so the training component of all of this 
Um, it used to be when we were in school, all we did was do a fire drill every month or mm -hmm. however long we did that. Um, and now we have to train and kids and be prepared <coughs> for different situations. Um, we used to do train for nuclear attack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or tornadoes. <even. laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I went to a school in Germany, elementary school in Germany, and we had those right early. Yeah. Because right. we were so close to yeah. USSR. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the uh, some of the numbers I saw in some of the surveys. So 186 respondents, which is good. A, a little good lower than I had wanted. Um, we were a little high tech where we asked parent or people to respond either going to our website or they could scan the QR code. And I did talk to a few people out there that didn't send it in and they're like, you know, we're, we, we just felt that you know, we did have the urge to fill the survey out. So I don't know what we could have done to get that urgency yeah. to have people fill that survey out. But I still think it gave us some valuable information. And as we're planning how to share information, we use some of the, the comments from that. So research and surveys, around 200 is an acceptable number to give okay. you a good picture. So 186 is right in there. Okay. So. Uh, but what I found interesting was 44.62% uh, said they would definitely support the bond, right? 26.88% uh, said they probably would. That's a good number it is. that you guys should be excited about. I think that helped the board as well, um, you know, in making the decision. Um, but I was pleased the first question right off the bat is what grade would you give the school district? And oh. we're in education without a rubric, yeah. just out of the blue. And um, so had some sleepless moments with that, but <laughs> overall it came back yeah. positive. So I have, uh, so on, on the other, yeah. when we're talking about approving the bond, uh, once you added the question about matching funds and would that sway more, 58, 0.6% said yes it would. Yeah. So I think people like to know that uh, the funds can be leveraged to maybe double your funds. Yeah. So one of the things we're working with that too, Dennis, just so you are aware, we, we have ESSER dollars that came from the federal government. ESSER dollars are for COVID relief dollars still. Um, we have three schools that we have um, slated over the next two summers to get new HVAC systems with those, those dollars. Um, we're leveraging that also with a BEST grant at Delta High School. We wrote that in February of 22 um, for $12 million. Our match on that is 40%, so it's a little over four, but that $2.5 million for the HVAC system is within that matching funds for that. Again, if we can get these, secure this bond, we can go for more BEST grants as well, like at Cedar Ridge High School and or North Fork High School. Um, and then we can potentially add even more to our overall piece, like auxiliary gyms at all three. Mm -hmm. um, that would be ultimately the goal, um, I'm, but we have to secure those funds and we'd have to get those grants and be it. So when we're advertising this as the bond, what we've advertised is what we can do with that actual money. Um, but we would, are planning on and want to um, leverage that money to remodel all of those high schools on the inside as well. And then you made a point, that, well, back to the, the matching grants. I'm assuming, I don't want to assume anything that, so if you get this bond and you have this revenue come in, that you can use that. I know it's only capital expenses, but you can also use matching grants with that money? Correct. Okay. You can, so and so, so that could be your match. And so, you know, when you're talking about a $12 million best grant, for coming up with four million dollars as a match is a difficult piece, even though you know four point nine million for the match. Right. Um, that's still a lot of money in figuring that out. We've been able to leverage that federal dollars of COVID, and then about two point um, four million is going to come for the general fund or what we've saved to make some of this stuff happen. Um, so, but if you have twelve million dollars and you don't have a bond or you don't have those federal dollars to help. Um, coming with that kind of match is almost impossible. Has the state talked about any other funding coming down the pipe? They have not, and actually we're, we're a little worried about um, BEST has reduced over the years, so we're hoping that stays steady. We want to continue to apply for BEST grants when you can 
get, uh, you know, school district 40% and the state paying 60, we need to do that every time we can. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> when I was up in Alaska, I used to meet with uh, Senator Sullivan, the U.S. state senator up there. He met with us pretty quarterly. And the one thing he said, he told local entities is, man, if it's, if you're getting a grant that's uh, or a matching grant or money from the feds, it's 60, 40, jump on it. Yeah. 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 And we have, and so our current um, best grant, we didn't make the cut. We are three below and I heard one dropped out and it, it's reliant on those school district passing their bonds okay. or um, so we're still in the running, and we'll have to see how that goes, but we'll reapply um, if not. So it makes a difference if you if the community supports not, you? Not, not with us. So you can write a bond, and um, or you can write a best grant, but reliant on a bond for the matching funds. And we're, we went for our best, but our bond is separate. Sometimes they tie those together, um, kind of to promote people to pass their local um, bond. Okay. So knowing they can get matching funds. Okay. Uh, back to the, the grades. Uh -huh. I thought that was very interesting. So 18.2.8% gave you an A. Yeah, I was pretty pleased good. with that. And then 45.16 gave you B. So 60, almost 64% gave you a high grade for the job you're doing, basically. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah. You know, I think we have wonderful staff out there, wonderful parents, and our kids work really hard. And it's a team effort. It truly is. And, um, you know, I think a lot of that goes to our staff out there working, and we just can't give up. Um, our school performance came back, and we're a performance school district. We're pleased with that. Um, we're in a good place, but we still have lots of work to do. So only 0.63 gave you an F. So I don't know who. Yeah, who I'm sure you did make someone happy at yeah, some time. Yeah. Yeah. And only 5.38 gave you a D, and then 30% uh, gave you a C. So right. overall. And, overall. And you're in a tough business to please people. So. That is true. Yeah. That is true. As, as we are. So I, yes. I, I can feel your pain. Yeah. Um, anything else that you uh, want to talk about? Or you want so to I would just like to talk about um, the bond will be finished in 23, but this is 22. So there's a year gap in there. Um, taxpayers will not be um, taxed double for that year. The new bond will not start to go into effect. Um, that'll be December of 23, but it's passed, so 24. They will not be double taxed in there. And then um, we're asking for that same mill levy just to be extended. And um, this new bond is replacing um, the old bond. And uh, the mills is 4.974. And those mills will continue on a $100,000 uh, residential property. It's $35.50 a year. And um, not a lot of properties out there for a hundred thousand. So if you take that 35, 60, 56, multiply it times three for a three hundred thousand dollar house, it's um, hundred and six dollars and sixty eight cents a year, less than ten dollars a month to um, help our kids. Our theme is building our future together. Um, it really takes all of us. It takes that village. And then on other properties, such as businesses, that um, the mills are the same, but the percentage changes. And um, so it's $144.13 a year on $100,000. So um, we're hoping that our taxpayers just continue to support us and we will just continue, um, you know, moving forward and updating our facilities for our kids. So I was I was asked uh, why continue the bond instead of try to do a, a mill levy, straight mill levy where you're not paying that interest rate? Yeah, well we feel we have some capital needs and um, you get the money up front, so you get those that money up front and you can make those um, remodel, um, you know, update those schools where they need to be. 
So don't you think that's yeah? And mill levies every year, you get a certain amount every year, which that would mean we'd have to go out for a CP or a loan or something something different to leverage that money gotcha. um, in that fashion. But when you're doing capital construction, you really need that money up front. You can't get it year to year. Okay. Yeah. So that's the difference in the two. Okay. Another thing that you know, if this. Um, you know, bonds paid off, people do not pass it. It's harder, um, our consultant is like, it's easier to ask people to continue. They're paying it, we're just asking them to continue to support our schools and support our kids. Okay. Are you getting any, um, I realize you got the survey, but, but you feel phone calls, you're out in the community and talking to people. So what's the feel out there, just normal conversations? What's the positive, what's the negative? We've talked to different groups and they're like, well, let's just continue it. And I think that's a very positive. They're, they're currently paying and um, continue. And the mills are only 4.974. So we're hoping they support that. Um, what other positives? Are well, I think the big general piece is I think they really do support that. Uh, those entrances in those high school they see yes. the need yeah. um, and and honestly I think if people whoever's been in our buildings and understands the locker room situation absolutely feels like that's a need as well um, and, and we've been asked that the negative side of that is well it seems kind of sports oriented and um, I would say yeah it does feel that way a little bit but it's just because of the current space that hasn't been remodeled you know we're, we're really looking at those locker room and when you do expand those you have to expand to other areas uh, to outside of your building. And so, um, so that, I think that's probably the one negative that we've really heard is that it seems like it's, it's more sports activity oriented than classroom oriented. Um, but I, I would argue that, that that space is just as important for our students as any space that we have in the building. And to add to that, we have the ESSER, the COVID funds that helps with HVAC systems and air quality and learning space and then the best is for academics or health safety but there's nothing to update those spaces that we're talking about and that's the bond um, plus we feel that all of our kids eventually the plan is they all go to one of our high schools mm -hmm. and this way we can affect all students at some time yeah so are you planning on any open houses for people to come see what you're I am glad you asked because we have some. That wasn't <laughs> we have some community forums coming up. Okay. Um, our Paoni community forum will be at Paoni K8, and we'll show them how people enter the school, how they can dart down a hall or be in with quite a few students all at once. And that's next Tuesday on the 27th at 5:30. And then our Delta communities on October 3rd, and we'll get this up on our website, and um, we need to send this um, to the DCI as well. Our Cedar Edge community on the October 5th, and Hotchkiss community on the 12th. So Delta, I see on there says location to be determined. When I printed this, we were deciding, we're going to have those at the high schools and give people, hey, this is how you currently enter. What's good about it? What's bad about it? Mm -hmm. Let them see. And then take them on a tour of our locker room. Let them see, um, let them see everything where we are. Okay. I was in the DHS locker room a couple of weeks ago and I think they'll be shocked at just how 41 years, right? 41 yeah. years. Yeah, it hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. um, and our people have done a great job of maintaining them. Yeah. It just, it's, it's just oh, the, the wear and tear and the right. space is just not. The, the, the facilities just aren't very good either. Yeah. That the kids have to use. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So, anything else? You know, there's a lot going on, but I think um, there's a short amount of time for us to get our information out. Yeah. So, we're going to be sharing the facts um, about, um, you know, everything that we're sharing with community service groups and, um, as a school district, we can just share the facts and the pros and the cons. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that'll do it for our time and appreciate you guys sitting down Thank and you. discussing the issue. And uh, we'll um, we'll look forward to seeing what happens in November. Yeah. Right. We'll be up at one of those. Uh, well, I think we'll be at all four of those Perfect. Um, tours just to see the difference between the different facilities. Sure. Okay.
Right. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much, Dennis.